three, <laughs> two, it's not live. Okay, three, two, one, live. Hello. Uh, my name's Christopher Coppola. I'm here at the incredibly important and beautiful San Francisco Art Institute, which we all call SPI. Uh, as you can see here, it's one of the oldest art schools in the country, uh, an important art school. And uh, this is our main hub of PAWFest California 2013. Uh, this is our orientation to talk about why PA, why PAWFest California, the various contests, uh, and also a little bit about the history of PA. I want to kind of uh, explain it to everybody that's tuned in and also to my students that are here that are participating. It's, it's great, and I'll tell you, tell you why it's great, because most of the students that are participating are from different countries. And they're here studying at the R Institute, but they actually are representing different countries. Um, but this is something that we've never done before. Um, it's the largest PA that I've ever done, um, partly because I was appointed by uh, Governor Brown to the California Arts Council. My dad was big on the California Arts Council. Um, but we want to celebrate art in California. Uh, California, what is it, the sixth largest economy in the world. It's like its own country. And we have the lowest support of art. I mean, I think uh, South Dakota spends more money on art. And that's a little ridiculous. So partly uh, why I'm doing this is to show the beauty, not only of our great state, but the beauty of the people. And art is within us all. And art is empowering. Um, I always say, you know, art is like toothpaste. Without it, your soul decays. I also quote uh, Mother Teresa, and I paraphrase slightly, but she said, true poverty is not not having money or food. It's not counting. It's not having any human worth to the rest of the world in the other humans' eyes. And that is that happens. And it's sad. But art can fix that. Art gives people a voice. Art gives people human dignity. And uh, I want more of that. And when, a, you know, when Mother Teresa was around, the world was rough. It's even rougher. It's even tougher. Uh, there's more people that don't count. And in and, and, and very, very rich countries, too. They don't count. Um, but we have this beautiful internet world, which we often take advantage of, or we don't, we take for granted, that we can use to actually empower people and share their stories and make meaningful connections, both in the real world and the cyber world. And that's what PA is about. That's why I created it. I want people to know that it's a gift to use the internet and to really share their hearts, you know, from the heart and to the heart and creativity so they have a voice. It's all about the voice, like Mother Teresa said. It's, you know, if you have a voice, you're a somebody, okay? It's not, it's not, you know, if you own all this stuff, you're a somebody. And a lot of people feel that if they don't own a bunch of stuff, they're, they're um, you know, they're nobody. But it's not that. It's having a vision having a voice, and knowing that in all of us, there is a creative spirit, and there is an art, and that's why we need to support the arts, and California doesn't do that enough, and I'm going to make sure, as a council member, that we do more of that. Okay. I just had to get that off my chest. I had to get a little bit of that off my chest. Okay. Now, why PA? Why did I do it? Well, in 2006, um, I was uh, involved with a uh, film festival called Flicks on 66. Um, it was a great idea. I think it's still around. I changed the name to Duke City Shootout. But it was about having film students at some of the major film schools submit screenplays, like from UCLA, USC, NYU, AFI, um, submit a screenplay. And if they got picked, they would get a 30-person crew, and they would go out and make a movie, a 20-minute movie. And it, that was cool. But what I saw more was that the, the students were using this as a calling card to get another movie, that they didn't really completely look at what they were doing at that moment as just as important as another movie. For example, a lot of people will do a two-minute trailer piece to hopefully get a $100 million movie. Well, my attitude is whether you're doing a, you know, a one-minute piece or a $100 million movie, you go at it exactly the same way. There's no difference. It's a creative process. You respect the creative process. You treat the process with dignity. You treat the artwork with dignity. And so when I was doing that festival, I got a little tired of it. I got very tired of it, actually. And I said, I want to open up a contest 
for the so-called common man. Uh, I use common man meaning all of humanity, the old man, the old Jungian concept of that we're all from the same old archetypical human being from way back. But I wanted to celebrate that, and I wanted a plumber to tell a story. I wanted a construction worker, a manicurist, a librarian, everyday people to tell a story. I didn't want a filmmaker. And what I got in return just blew my mind. It just was like, there was nothing to prove. It was from their heart and to their heart. They weren't trying to sell anything. They were perfectly happy being a plumber. And, and that was what was cool about it. So I started with that, and we built, and we built, and we built. We went to different communities, uh, Elko, Nevada, uh, <coughs> Chicago. Um, we went to overseas to Azola and Italy and Germany. Um, and, and I just started seeing people were really tuned in, like, wow, we have this internet. Uh, we have cameras. L why not? Let's be creative and share, you know, who we are, our ideas, and our creativity. Um, actually, we need to do that. It's important that we do that so we don't get lost. It's important that people know we're out here. Um, that's how we make change. Um, we live in a world that is not so much the written word anymore. It is a visual world. Um, that's why I teach visual syntax. And the more you learn about what I call cinema, cinematic syntax, and you become articulate with that, the more you can get your ideas out there. Because you know, we started with the written word. We started with oral storytelling. I mean, we didn't start with the written word. We started with visuals and oral storytelling. And then the written word came. So it's kind of a cyclical thing. Now we're going back to visuals and oral storytelling. But now we have technology. And now we can actually get a global cinematic syntax to get our ideas across that cross you know, it doesn't matter where, what country you're from, what language you speak, you can get an idea across, a narrative idea, and communicate your vision to another person's vision. I think that's a healing thing. I think uh, to be able to do that and to share yourself and be yourself and not pretend you're somebody else, not selling out, just be who you are, it actually helps us all. I always bring up uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth, which is his most modern play, but, you know, Macbeth was an awesome warrior, he was a great warrior. I mean, he did what he had to do, you know? I mean, there's such a thing as a warrior. You need, I mean, throughout history, there's been warriors. And he was an awesome warrior. But as soon as he thought he should be king, which he was a lousy king, everybody gets hurt. As soon as he was something he wasn't, everybody gets hurt. Better to be who you are, understand that, be in tune with that, you know, keep your dignity, you know, learn from that, and share that. And you make those kind of connections. But, you know, so PA, Project Accessible Hollywood, and I modeled him out from Mark Twain, who uh, you know, basically said true, true greatness is when you help others find their greatness. It's a tag your it concept. Um, I, I just like the idea that the old man is there to hear your story. He's in the rocking chair. He says, come on up. People don't listen to you. I'll listen to you, OK? I'll put your voice out there, and you can make connections with the rest of the world. So that's where Pa started. That's why there's the old man. And we've done 46 of these. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Pa Fest California. But before I do that, we're going to show our trusted promo, OK? So let's dim the lights, and we'll show you the PAW promo, which explains a lot of the contest. And then I'll go through how PAW Fest California is a little different and, uh, and introduce some of the teams and the cities and the people participating. OK, let's roll it. We need volume. We have an audience here as well. This is PAW, Project Accessible Hollywood. We believe everyone has a story to tell, regardless of background or age. PawFest comes to your community, offering you the chance to learn new skills, tell your own story, and share it with your friends and neighbors and even the rest of the world. Founded in 2006 by seasoned film and television director Christopher Coppola, Project Accessible Hollywood is a nonprofit organization bringing digital empowerment to people and communities across the nation and the world. At every PawFest, people from all walks of life join together to rekindle their creative voices, learn valuable skills, and connect with neighbors, appreciating what makes their community special through the process of creating short digital films. PawFest travels the world, engaging all cultures, helping to bridge the digital divide by providing the latest in new media tools and a helping hand encouraging everyone to participate in a wide range of festival contests. The Premier PawFest contest is ambitious. Multiple teams of five local citizens create six-minute films in just four days. The stories vary considerably, but they share relevance and sincerity. 
More and more people have access to a video cell phone, so why not use it to create art? The cell phone art contest is simple. In one minute, in one shot, illustrate a theme that reflects the community, as presented by Christopher Coppola. The topic is a good day's work, because of the great work ethic in Chicago. Participants in the DigiPortraits contest have two minutes to create an artistic portrait of either themselves or another person. The only limit is one's imagination. Children 14 and under have their own contest, Circus Vision. Held in a location unique to their community, the kids assemble elements of a video treasure hunt based on circus themes. For composers of original music, PawFest offers the Tone Poem Contest, a two-minute opportunity to create imagery from their community that suits their music. The week of PawFest activities concludes with a gala event, the final night screening, and award ceremony. In a local theater and online webcast, all are welcome to come together and celebrate the stories and the art of that week's activities. <laughs> and uh, it's just so great. I mean, what's really funny and really wonderful about it is we realized very early on, why didn't we just go out and make a film anyway? We coulda. Right. We probably shoulda. But it took Pontus to get us to do it, and I'm really excited that it did, because we're just having a great time. I had to be like the director, and I had to cut, and I had to edit, and that's something that um, I've never done before. And this whole thing has been a life learning experience for me. For me, it's been a dream come true in many ways. I've always been interested in film. I've always wanted to kind of you know, figure out a way to tell stories through this medium. I think it's an important way to do it, a fun way to do it. I think I've found a new passion. It's definitely something I want to be involved with again. Project Accessible Hollywood, promoting art through technology and bringing us all a little closer together. Everyone has a story to tell and there's an artist within us all, no matter what walk of life or what community we're from. Oftentimes, the digital arena separates us. Uh, people hide behind avatars and the technology. But PA is like a virtual campfire in the 21st century. It uses the digital arena to bring us together, to share our stories and reconnect with our fellow man. This is the PA Nation. I hope you join us. OK, so that gives you a little idea of what we've been doing with PA, or especially our big PA Fest. Thanks for the applause. I, that's good. That's good. It's all, it's all there. I, I, I feel it. I feel the love. Um, anyhow, what makes this different is we literally have six cities right now, many of them are tuned in, um, that are participating uh, in Pawfest, California. We're trying to represent both the north and the south, uh, the small town, the big city, uh, creativity. While everybody is uh, you know, not only celebrating their communities that are different, they're celebrating the whole state, the beauty of California, and giving something back, giving California a gift, uh, and uh, having California give something back to them, what they've learned the, uh, from California, the wisdom of California, the beauty of California, how it affected their lives, how it affects your own creative process. Uh, we have, uh, first, the Redlands, Redlands, the town of Redlands, which is oh about an hour um, south of Los Angeles. Which, um, if you're driving to the desert, Joshua Tree, and uh, I got married out in the Twenty Nine Palms and Joshua Tree. Where I love Joshua Tree. It's the only place in California that you can see it. Um, they are uh, celebrating Redlands. Uh, they're part of the University of Redlands, and they're also part of Redlands High School. And uh, they're participating in some of our log, uh, bigger projects. Uh, uh, Mobiflix, we have six teams. And uh, these teams are representing these different cities. Like I said, we have Redlands. Then you go up a little bit. We have Los Angeles, Hollywood, the whole area. Go up a little bit. We have Oxnard by the, the Channel Islands. We also will be going to Catalina. We're not leaving the little islands out. We got Catalina. I don't have Alcatraz, but we have Catalina. And we have the Channel Islands area. Uh, we go up further, and we have Oakland, the great Oakland. Um, uh, we're working with the high school there. I believe it's called, uh, what, Oakland School of the Arts um, for, for uh, high school students, an incredible high school. Obviously, we have San Francisco, the San Francisco Institute. Uh, also, San Francisco State 
the cinema department is heavily involved with this, representing um, you know the, the Bay Area. And we have Humboldt, which is funny because um, at uh, I think it's Cal State Humboldt, that was my first film festival that I won. Um, Thirty, it's a thirty-year-old festival. I won it. I was very honored uh, for an experimental film I made called Plato's Cave about the allegory of the cave, and they got it. And it's a, it's a sweet little, well, it's not sweet, it's a very philosophical movie, um, but I'm glad Humboldt is participating. Um, Mobiflex is going to be a, a project that we have six teams um, that are celebrating California in, in two ways. Uh, they're doing a story, a narrative story that can be either experimental or literal or documentary. But they're giving a gift to California. I have a team Middle East, which is made up of uh, fine young ladies from Turkey and Jerusalem. And uh, they're gonna, their, their landmark location is in Napa Valley. And they're going to celebrate the people of Napa. I mean, it's a, it's a small town, and they make great wine. But it's got a rich history. Uh, then we have Team Far East. We have a bunch of students that I have from mainland China and uh, also from Vietnam, and they're going to do something about basically about little neighborhoods in San Francisco with the Golden Gate Bridge um, as their world-famous California landmark. Uh, it's a little love story they're going to do between a Latino uh, boy and a Chinese young lady, and it's a, a one-day story of love and celebration and how California can be romantic that way. Nice celebration. Then we have Team Detroit. Uh, which is a bunch of students that I actually am involved with as an adjunct professor. I am the head of the film program at the San Francisco Art Institute, but I also do lecture around the world, and I have actually been part of Madonna University for six years. And I have a lot of them come out. Uh, actually, I think all the film students come out every year to participate in our big PA, PA LA, PA California, every year. And they're doing it to celebrate California uh, because there's an interesting relationship. It, it, it's not necessarily a good relationship between Detroit and L.A., but L.A. once um, had the best transportation in America. And Walt Disney had this idea of monorails and all this. But the people that were inventing the automobile realized that L.A. was going to be a gold mine with cars. And that's the connection. It killed the transpo, but it became the autotopia. So I think Detroit needs to give a little something back for that, you know, because we went through the smog uh, in L.A., grew up with that. I want, I want to see some beauty, Detroit. I want you to show me some beauty, okay? That's why I'm sending you to Catalina, so you can take that back uh, to Livonia, um, and also, you know, uh, maybe it, it's a tag you it, you know, concept. Bring some of the California golden sunshine beauty back to Livonia. Uh, we also have um, Team Redlands which is my other alma mater, which I went to. I, I went to the San Francisco Art Institute in the film program uh, in the uh, 80s, mid-80s, and I went to the University of Redlands School of Music in 1979 to 1981. I believe that was the time when we did a paw fest between the two schools. But uh, uh, I love the little town of Redlands. Uh, there, there's a, there was a, a kind of melancholic uh, feeling I had with the smog that Detroit helped create, uh, but the moon was orange. And it was really quite beautiful. And I would walk the train tracks uh, at night to get my musical composition ideas. They are going to celebrate Joshua Tree and the small town of Redlands. What's happening to my microphone? OK. Uh, <clears throat> but they're going to go out and do something. And the, their uh, landmark location is Joshua Tree. Um, we also have uh, Team Venezuela. Team Venezuela, uh, another group of students of mine. Um, and they're going to celebrate the great Haight Ashbury, you know, where all the hippies came from. Uh, uh, I believe Jimi Hendrix jammed there. So there's a whole thing going on with that landmark. Now, the one thing that is going to be true in all of these, there's going to be a sense of breaking bread. People kind of sitting at the table, whether it's a meal or just a, you know, with the way they hang out, that everybody's equal. Uh, there's some dignity. There's some respect. And they share ideas. And that's something they're bringing. So we're going to respect you know, the culture of the Middle East and the different religions. And the Middle East is going to respect the small town uh, faiths and, and share gifts back and forth. And I think that's important because we're all in this together. I call it the everybody boat. No matter what faith, who we are, common ground, common sense, human dignity, we're all in, we're all in it together. Remember that, in it together. There's no separation. We've got to look out for each other, okay? We should not have people that don't count in the world. They do count. All right. 
and art helps with that. But anyhow, those are the, uh, that's the big contest, and there's six teams. <clears throat> then we have four high schools that are participating, and they're doing what's called the Filmmaker's Challenge. But before I go there, why don't we show a couple Mobiflex. Um, the first one I want to show is the one that taught me. It was a young, um, young lady from Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico, from 2006, told a story about her father that passed away. And I got to tell you, I see this movie and I, it makes me want to cry. I, sometimes I do. I, I sit in the corner and I sob because it goes right to my heart. And it's not cool to see like a grown man like doing this, you know, sobbing. Not a good thing. But it, it does it. And that's very effective. So uh, I want to show her little piece. She's not a filmmaker. She just really passionately wanted to uh, give a gift to her father that passed away. Doesn't look, you know, professional. She stills, but just it, it doesn't matter. It goes right to your heart. Uh, can we roll that, please? Or, no, no, no. What is left? The one that you still found the sound, but the image was low quality. And it, all right, turn the lights off. Let's get the sound. Thank you for giving us the morning. My dad left a lot behind. The most important were the things he taught me. Like how to make a perfect tortilla. How to drive. And the many uses of duct tape. He taught me how to pray. My dad taught me about love. That is the single strongest word anybody can ever speak. I grew to learn that love is a strong thing to hold on to and never let go of. He left me his memories, and now they are mine. My mother was really involved with the church, and growing up, she would take me to funerals with her, but I never really understood. When my dad passed, I couldn't understand. I wondered if it was real or not. I have found that the words I used to describe what happened are very important. I can only say he passed, never anything else. Maybe if I don't say it, it means he's safe. He disappeared in December on a day when it was really cold. He never came to pick me up from school. I waited and waited, but he never came. Barbara told us she had seen him that morning, and he seemed happy. When the police asked us what he was wearing, we said he was wearing a jacket with a picture of Grumpy on it that my mom and I gave him. They called us in early March and told us someone found a man lying on the side of the road. They found him four days before Christmas, but didn't know who he was because he had no identification. Someone recognized his jacket. My mom says he went away to die like the old people do so we wouldn't have to watch. One day he was here with me, and the next he's not. My mom and me go through our lives acting as if we don't have a hole in our heart, but we do. Sometimes I feel like he's next to me, and he never left. I am the youngest, and still am. He just kept getting older. My dad taught me how to love, and no matter what happens, I won't stop. I love you, Daddy. I'd like to see this young lady direct a feature film because there's just no nonsense. It goes straight to the heart. That's what we need in art, straight to the heart, okay? That's how you communicate. Uh, let's show another one. Um, it's called uh, Team uh, Puppet and Poet. And I think this would be good for my friend and who's directing the Team Far East because it's a relationship between two people and their art form, and you're doing a love story. 
okay, from two different cultures. These cultures are the same. It's Latino culture, but uh, two different art forms. So why don't we go ahead and play that one? It's an example of a, of a mobile flick and uh, how you can be creative with how you put two things together. Okay. Displacement, dislocation, urban renewal, restoration, not preservation. Demolish, revitalize, and relocate residents. Remove them from their current residence, eminent domain, if they restrain. False eviction, a fear tactic like deportation, foreclosure, get the bank to kick them out, send the police, remove them now to build a condo. High rise, high rent criminals, each and every one of them. Affordable housing, not allowed in this establishment. General Hospital, revitalized. Ramona Gardens, criminalized. Metro Goldline, Boyle Heights is your time. Golden Boy Sears, Robin Wood of Fears. Eviction, demolition, destruction, new construction. Mixed use housing, terror of becoming homeless, living on the street. She used to write songs by the river. Mm -hmm -hmm. Where cats used to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm -hmm. I'm from the city, Boyle Heights and Gritty. Bam. Sometimes I feel like escaping the way this earth I can't. Breathe myself, so I write it on molluscans, notebooks, and journals with the black ink pen. I transcend my words. Yeah, yeah. Adi Drabi, Mobby, like Joker Brand. Oh, sick. It's so sick the way I flow.
Okay, very creative way of doing a little love story. Uh, there's no rules to the MOBA flick. I give a couple ideas and, and they go out and do it your way. The only rule that I have for the entire PA is you don't do anything to offend anybody. You want to tell your story to the widest audience, to the, the big audience. You know, I mean, uh, you don't need to. Okay, so that means, you know, no bad words, no, no certain, you know, sexual content. Um, it's not necessary. You come up with a philosophy, with an idea, um, and you share that. And if you really want to get into people's hearts, and that's the way you make change. You get them to think about something. Um, so that's the one rule for everything. Do not do anything that will get people not in, to be interested in your piece. That could be politics. Um, that could be, uh, you know, um, a, 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 a racist concepts, you know, that will people that are of different color may not dig what you're doing. So we don't want that. It's all about the human um, spirit. And it's all about the stories, and it's all about how we're telling our, our, our sharing ourselves with everybody. So you got to respect that certain things will offend. And in this festival, uh, we don't offend. We want you to think about what this person is saying, and maybe maybe it sheds some light in how there's a similarity between people. Um, so that's Mobile Flick. They, those pieces will be five minutes minimum, ten minutes maximum. Okay, they're going to be using better cameras than those people did. But here's the deal. I mean, those are very cheap cameras, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the stories were clear. Uh, they learn how to use the cameras, and you can get a great camera and not know how to use it, and it, doesn't, it looks terrible. So everybody's going to learn their cameras, see what it could do, whether it's a cheap camera or an expensive camera, and, and basically make use of it in a way that um, it helps them tell their story. Okay, the next contest, which we've normally done, oh, I want to show, uh, oh, we're getting in there. The next contest is called Filmmaker's Challenge, which has some very strict rules. These are primarily for filmmakers, not non-filmmakers. And the idea is that they have to learn a skill. Um, you know, you have STEM, but this is STEAM. You know, we're tech there's science, technology, math, uh, English, but we're adding art into it. Uh, you need to learn how to use the technology. You need to learn how to edit. Um, and, and you need to work under the gun. And by doing this, it's a craft that you can go out and get work. So this is specifically to teach people that really want to make it in the film business. Uh, they develop their voices, but they learn craft in a very short period of time. Uh, gives them a taste of what it's like, I say, to work with a movie mogul. I'm the guy. I'm the cigar guy. I'm demanding. Um, I demand things to be done on time. I can yell. Uh, there's all kinds of things like that. So they learn how to work with a movie mogul and how to keep their identity. That's part of the contest. So there's very strict, and I give them a theme. Um, I'm going to show you a couple filmmakers challenge. Uh, one that was made by the LA Film School. Um, I believe the topic was, what is a miracle? And they had to have a moving shot that had to be exactly, exactly at like two minutes. Um, they had to make use of one instrument. They, they had to make use of only three characters. Uh, and they worked under the gun. So that we're going to show that, so you can see that. and then. And we're going to show a film that was made in Georgia, overseas, um, you know, uh, a great culture. We're talking the Black Sea. We're talking Jason the Argonauts and the Golden Fleece. Great, great culture. The, the Caucasus, okay? Um, and we, they had to base their thing on the great Orbliani, uh, who was kind of like the Shakespeare Cervantes of, of Georgia, and the wisdom of Orbliani. And so we're going to show the piece that was made by uh, Bo, Bow to Me, Art University, and I believe it was something to do with the blind and this not having senses, and it doesn't matter. And you do not need to have vision to have vision. We've done this with the Braille Institute and our brothers and sisters who are visually impaired or can't see at all, and they did beautiful movies. You do not need to have vision to have vision, but in a visual world, our, our brothers and sisters who can't see need to be able to communicate so they don't get left behind just like Mother Teresa said. So let's, uh, let's show the, uh, the LA Film Schools what is a miracle. It was the winning one. And then uh, I want to show the bout to me one right after. OK? Mr. Paddock, if you can find it. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be right after, but close. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. But you know which one is the bout to me one, right? 
Uh, maybe Swan can help you, but it's the one that uh, it, it ends. Uh, it's at the Black Sea. There's water, and it ends with the pier in the water. But let, while we're waiting, let's go ahead and show the L.A. Film School. What is a miracle? Okay. Following us, man. Who's following us? The girl. What girl? Girl. From the apartment? Yeah. Come on, dude, you're crazy. Somebody did us a favor. I'm gonna get some more coffee. something that knows what we did. Dude, there's nothing like that. We've been doing this for years, man. It's not that it's, big of a deal. It's different this time, man. We've done this a hundred times. It's gonna, it's gonna work itself out.
Okay. Um, I just like the fact that that was from a different country and uh, had its message. And it's also an all-lady all group, just like Tim, Team Middle East. Something kind of feminine about that one. Okay. Uh, the, uh, so there's going to be four high schools doing that, a high school in Oxnard, a high school in Oakland, uh, Redlands, and Humboldt. And they're all going to be doing that. And their, their uh, thing is California Pride. That's what they're doing it on. It's going to be either a love story, a Western, an urban drama, or uh, I believe I said comedy, but I have so much going on in my head I can't remember. Uh, the other contest, very quickly, we have DigiPortrait. I'll show just one. How am I doing on time here? I think I'm good. Can't, am I good? All right, good. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll show some DigiPortrait. So what a DigiPortrait is, is uh, you come to one of the hubs. We have uh, six hubs, I believe. Uh, one at the University of Redlands, one here at the San Francisco Art Institute, uh, one at the uh, Oakland School of the Arts, uh, one on Sunset Boulevard in LA, uh, and uh, San Francisco State's gonna have one, uh, and I believe that's all of them. Oh, Oxnard, Oxnard's gonna have one. And in those hubs, there'll be computers with software, uh, Sony Vegas editing software, and we have cameras, and you'll go out and you do a documentary a portrait, not a documentary. It can be a documentary if you want that, but it could be completely abstract of another human being as a gift. It's all about gift giving. Uh, we'll show one, just one of these, which was about a, a woman that lives out in Joshua Tree and how um, she really, she's a poet and she spends a lot of time with a very rare desert tortoise that has been, you know, they're almost, a, they're having issues because people are shooting these beautiful creatures with uh, BB guns. And so we'll show this as a, an example. It's, I think it's Haviland to Haviland. I sh we should have that, because I, I do show that quite often. If we don't have that one, then there's a one that was made by um, a Korean-American filmmaker. Do we have that one? De Haviland. OK, see if you have one that says De Haviland or Haviland. Okay, let's play that one. All right, this is an example of a digi portrait. This is open to everybody. You do not have to be a filmmaker. Okay, let's show it. In danger, high desert, the Hobby Desert, tortoise, land tortoise. And we're not really allowed to feed them, but they've gotten used to our food. And it's so fresh and so juicy that I can't resist because it makes them happy. When they wander through the desert, they seem to have regular paths. And I happen to live on a hill, and I'm so surprised to climb up this hill. Every year I get one, two, sorry, or three. I'm giving them tomatoes because that is the best. Bite-sized tomatoes is the best. They eat flowers. Uh, they also kind of seem to look in the dirt for the kind of minerals they want. And... Um, Oh, hang on. Oh, 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 oh. They're very poetic animals. They make no sound. And they're just disappearing silently, quietly, without a squeal. This one has three little bullet holes, not bullet, BB holes. I've seen some with larger bullet holes. Some get run over by cars and their shells get cracked. Okay, so she did a portrait of herself. That is a very good portrait, beautiful portrait, shows the area, uh, celebrates who she is. 
again, there's been there's also ones that are very abstract, like uh, someone did one of me once, which was a bunch of babbling. It was a bunch of water moving quickly. It's like a babbling brook because apparently I talk too much. Um, anyhow, uh, a tone poem contest. And I would like, who, uh, what, who won the most creative tone poem, uh, Jeremiah, at, at, at Alma Mater? It was the lady that also won the um, Filmmaker's Challenge. Can't remember what it was called, but I want to show that one. Maybe you can help find it. But, uh, but a, a tone poem is, the idea is you um, see music and hear film, okay? And you start with an idea, in, you know, that is philosophical, and in this particular one, the idea was called Scratching the Surface. Uh, and the filmmaker went out uh, thinking musically as they shot the shots. And the composer um, composed thinking visually. And then they married them together. So it's like a dance between music and film. It is not a rock video. It is a tone poem. You can do these if you're a composer. Uh, you, can, you can shoot it yourself or vice versa come down to one of the hubs and cut it. But I want to give you an example of the winning one. Do we know which one it is, Jeremiah? Manholes? No. Uh, this, is, uh, this is one that has paint. OK, let's show the one with the paint. OK. This wasn't the one, but this is fine. This is Art Institute. I was one of the San Francisco Art Institute uh, tone poems. One of my students, he did a great job, Martin. Um, OK, so those are contests you can do. Then we have this, what I call cell phone art. Uh, the uh, topic for cell phone art, I believe, is what? What is the topic for cell phone art? You guys put up the poster. Help me out. Uh, earthly paradise. OK, that's the topic. Uh, and anyhow, uh, do we have um, a winning one here of, um, let me think, do we have the one from L LA? But with, with, with a cell phone art, a video enabled cell phone, you go out and you take, you'll take Earthly Paradise and, and you will shoot something one minute or less in camera, no pausing, no editing, okay? And that will go up online and people will vote. Even if you're international, all around the world, you can do it, Earthly Paradise, and submit it online. And there's a separate prize for, we call it worldwide cell phone art. 
So, uh, okay, we're going to play one example of a self and our, and which one, which one is this? Okay, so this, this is one that was done at the very first PawFest Hollywood, and their topic was Guardian Angel. And it was a, it was a gentleman that lived in South Central, a rough neighborhood, and this was his cell phone art uh, called Guardian Angel. Okay. So that pretty much says it all. But it was interesting. He had a, he was very creative. He put his cell phone in a trash can, had a good shot of the bars and reaching in with the hangers. So you get creative with your shot. All in one shot, no pausing, uh, no editing in camera. So that's all open to everybody. Um, earthly paradise, because we're celebrating the beauty of California. Okay, and then one more thing, which I'm very, uh, it's, it's a pet project of mine. And I'm also doing this, uh, hopefully, through the California Arts Council, because I think it's very important that we support art in public schools, because we've cut it so drastically. And uh, for our young people to learn the technology so that they feel empowered and to, to develop the creative spirit early, because that gives worth, like I said before. Uh, we're doing something called Community Vision, which is going to have an after-school program in Los Angeles uh, being held in Pacoima. Uh, LA's Best, which is the largest after-school program in the whole LA area, maybe even the largest in our country, and a smaller uh, boys and girls club here in San Francisco, uh, working with uh, uh, City Studio, which is a, a, a youth organization uh, for digital um, art that the San Francisco Art Institute um, works with and sponsors. So they are gonna do something with Skype. We're gonna have uh, six kids, uh, middle school kids in LA working with six kids at the Boys and Girls Club here in San Francisco celebrating community exchanging shots back and forth and making little movies together creating a connection in two different places of California so that's something I'm very proud of some it's like a pet project of mine uh, to get the kids started early because if you get them started early they they feel they have worth, they know they have worth, they go out into the community and they add to the community uh, in terms of jobs and uh, in terms of uh, you know feeling connected, it's important. And that's the beauty of filmmaking and uh, the digital arena is it can do that. And you go on online, it can do that. Anyhow, stay in tune, uh, go to the website, the pawfest.org website. Everybody who's participating is gonna do daily blogs and take pictures of their experience and, and post it so you can root for your teams, okay? And the nice thing is, even though everybody's a winner, it is an award contest, and there's cash prizes. You know, there's nothing wrong with a little cash now and again. Everybody can use a little cash, and, and it's a free festival, but we still give cash prizes. I think that's important for your hard work. Uh, so we're gonna have two Screenings. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to have AMPIS, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, which holds the Academy Awards every year and gives out an Oscar. We're going to have a pre-screening, which I'll be at, for everybody in the Southern California area showing all the work. I cannot give any awards out there because why? They only give out the Oscar, okay? But I can celebrate everybody who did it. Um, it'll be live webcast. We'll take a picture of the giant Oscar outside. Uh, then I'm going to fly back to San Francisco and go to the August Coppola Theater, my father at San Francisco State, and that'll be live webcast, and everybody in the Bay Area will go there to see if they won. And the people in Southern California, if you want to know if you won, you got to tune in. Okay, one interesting point, and I, I say this, you know, humbly with humility, but a little bit of pride, uh, the Houstons were the ones that had the most Academy Awards and nominations. Well, the Coppola family just beat them. Do we have more 
Academy Awards and more nominations. So it's kind of interesting to be going from the Academy Theater to the August Coppola Theater. And on that note, I'll sign off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.